drawing of a hand. Okay, and I think I think we're just going to jump into it. So you have a little bit of time to download those resources if you want to. Please don't start early. We will have a warm-up area. We'll have a two-minute kind of prepping your pencils or whatever medium you're working with. And then we'll do a 10-minute warm-up of just quick hands, just very gestural hands. And Josh will be our live timer today. I forgot to tell you this before the stream. You can have a timer on a second okay. screen. And then we will get into actually drawing the hands. So let's talk about hands. This is something that a lot of artists either love drawing. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, Lamont for donating $5. Oh, what does that say? Oh, I'm not going to be able to read it. Hang on, I thought I could see the mind. It better be the god of digits. Oh, no. <laughs> You're going to have to help me read that when that pops up. i got to make that bigger. I'm waiting. Uh, but thank you so much, Ari. <laughs> I better be the god of digits Lamont. after the stream. I'm kidding, but thanks for all the great YouTube videos. I've been learning a lot. Hey, Lamont, thank you so much. And did that get added? Oh, did it get added to the goal? Yeah, 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 okay, good. So if you guys want to donate live, I forgot to mention, I want to do a live planting stream. I'm going to buy a bunch of planters and seeds. Uh, it's going to come up to around $50, so that's the donation goal for right now. The last one, oh, I forgot to mention, we got it last time, and we got the Astrid cat bed on the window, so you can kind of see it. Astrid's still not fully comfortable with it. She doesn't know if she can trust the weight, but she loves the one in the front room, so I assume eventually she'll love this one as well. <laughs> but then once I plant the, the little plants, I want to then grow a little garden on this table, and then when I do streams, you can see things grow each stream and how much they've progressed. At least that's the idea. We'll see if it works. So anyways, <laughs> uh, hands were one of those things in college and especially in high school that I noticed Artists would specifically hand them behind the back, put them in the pockets, just fade it into nothing. And especially doing concept art for characters, when there's such a focus on the wardrobe, oftentimes hands didn't get the attention that they deserved. So today, we're going to give it all the attention, because I think hands can add so much to a character more than even a wardrobe could, just depending on how they're positioned. Uh, my favorite hand artist is Alphonse Mucha. I think a lot of people assume I like him for... Uh, the other elements that he has, the decadence, but if you really look at his work, it's his hands. That he's, very, he's so good at doing very particular and emotion-specific hands. So I want you guys to feel comfortable drawing hands so that you can add this to your characters and to your art and give it a little bit more pizzazz than it already does. And I always joke with people because people think I'm really good at drawing hands, but I, I still struggle drawing hands uh, it's just I've drawn so many of them that there are little tips and tricks I've learned on how to draw them quickly, more efficiently, and then I learn, oh, okay, that works, oh, that doesn't, no, that's not how a hand actually moves, oh, no, the pinky can't move in that direction. So just draw, by drawing a bunch of them, you kind of eliminate options of how a hand could look, and then eventually you get something that looks a, more, a little more realistic. I, I joke with people that to get good with drawing hands, just draw a thousand of them. Uh, once you get past drawing a thousand, you'll be fine. You know, you can draw hands all, all day, but you first got to draw a thousand of them. So these are just some examples of hands that I've drawn in the past, and I wanted to show a variety of more simplified ones, like you see in the top right with this very mooka looking drawing, and then the left one, which has a very focus or heavy focus on gradations and value contrast. Uh, even with this bottom right one, it kind of has that same surrealistic lighting quality to it, but you can still t tell it has a realistic hand look to it. And then bottom left are just basically random uh, hand drawings of my friends. And one of them is my mom's actually. Uh, where did my layers go? Oh, there it is. Uh, Silent King was one of the drawings I did, uh, I think like five years ago, four years or five, or, yeah, about five years ago or four years ago. And uh, this was, it started as a hand uh, study. And similar to this hand bouquet that I did, it was just drawing a bunch of hands in different positions, different angles, and then doing different gestures. And it was for me to practice how the fingers move and interlock individually. And then that led into me doing the Silent King drawing where it was the same type of idea, and it just grew into an illustration from there. And then I really wanted to challenge myself with my collector drawing, and for those of you who followed me on Twitch back in the day, we, we kind of did this one together because a lot of you submitted your own hands and then I drew them into this piece. And there's over 300 arms and hands in this one. 
And this, to me, was a challenge of not only drawing hands, but feeling comfortable trying to start drawing them quicker and be more efficient with how I draw them. Because I considered myself not the fastest artist, and I wanted to get faster. And sometimes the only way to get faster at drawing something, but still keeping it looking good, is through repetition. So that's how I've been doing this. And then back when I did more digital stuff, I tried to quickly draw hands, and you can still tell with a, a clean color palette and a simple way of shading, you can create a hand in five minutes digitally just because of how fast you can slop on the, the colors and mix them. But I'm going to go through doing a more clean line art so that we kind of understand the anatomy and the proportions behind the hand. Because if you just jump into it, I feel a lot of hands often look misproportioned and oftentimes unrealistic by accident. So in the package that you can download below, I threw in a reference on just a little quick step-by-step -step on drawing hands with different expressions. But the main one I want to look at is this one. So this I did for CG Cookie back in the day when I worked for them. Still a great company, but now they're focused more on 3D. But back when I did the concept stuff, I wanted to show little tips on how to draw a hand. So I'm going to go through each of these really quickly, and then we'll talk about where is the... Oh yeah, so then we'll talk about the... I made, I made a little list of points that I want to make sure I, I talk about when drawing hands uh, before we get into drawing them. So the first thing I want to point is that hands are naturally curved, and when you think about hand, you don't think of one like this, you know, and they're not the same lengths. So first and foremost, you always have a hand that's usually more open, and the only time you have it where it's very rigid looking, if it's specifically trying to essentially tape the fingers together. But most hands, if you want them to feel fluid and natural, are very much webbed out and they often aren't fully extended. Usually there's a, I don't want to say a limp to them, but they're not quite fully extended all the way, and there's more of a natural, relaxed look to them. So the other thing I wanted to point out with the, the, this middle illustration is that the thumb isn't connected super, there's like a little push off here, off of the wrist area. So we'll talk about more about the shape and how to break it down because there is definitely a difference between a very detailed hand and a very simplified hand. Neither one is better than the other, and you see it with animation or artists that focus more on kind of a chibi anime look where they have very simplified hands, but they still read accurately. And we'll talk about how to do that. So on the left side, uh, the, the webbing in between each finger is very important. You don't see the webbing from this part of the hand, but if you turn your hand over, you can see the web <laughs> on oh, the yeah. front part. No, you don't see it on the back. So when you draw a hand, if it's palm facing toward the camera, you won't really won't draw the webbing. But if you draw it this way, you will see the webbing and you'll see the pronounced knuckles in between. And that's something that I, I want to make it apparent that the back side of a hand and the front side are very different and you should approach them differently. I mean, obviously there's similarities, but you want to approach them differently. Uh, we'll talk about breaking it down in just a second because that's simplifying. And Cynix is another artist on YouTube that does great job. Does a great job. Uh, he has a video specifically about hands and how to simplify them, and he does it with triangles. And it's a very, it's a great method. It helped me kind of figure out how to simplify things. So if that is something that interests you as well, I would definitely check him out. And uh, moving forward, when you look at your hands and your knuckles specifically, oftentimes artists overdraw them and they make them too wobbly looking. For the most part, if you really look at your hands, they're not as wobbly as you might think. It's very subtle curves, and I'm putting an emphasis on the word subtle. So you don't want to draw a hand that has all these, you know, bone joints, unless if you're drawing a witch or you're specifically pronouncing the knuckles to give that look and effect. And the other thing is your there are two prominent, or I guess three prominent wrinkles on your finger. The top one is usually always a single line, but the middle one is almost always a double line. And this is something that I usually see artists mess up, because when they draw their hand, usually they draw a single line for each of the wrinkles, but your middle knuckle, there's usually a double line wrinkle. And you can kind of see it if you look at your own hand. The middle one always has two lines, and it creates this uh, kind of folding on itself. And then the bottom one usually is a single line as well. 
And then it gets into the fat pads of the hands. I forgot who described them as pads, but now when I draw a hand, I always think of these cushiony fat pads, and that helps me kind of round out the hand so they don't look as flat. Hmm. I feel like my pinky has three lines. <laughs> I mean, kind of. And some of your top ones will have two. Let's see? Oh, yeah. But they're very small. Where, like, these are way more Those pronounced. Those are bigger, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And the third one, the well, reason I don't talk about the third line as much is these can be crisscrossing, there can be two, there can be one. It's kind of all over the place. So that will come down to your reference. But usually, I mean, even this one, you can see I have like little X's on, or maybe you can't see it that well on the stream, but uh, they definitely vary. Okay. Um, and if you're working in color, the skin palette is uh, varied. It's not just what most people would consider one or two tones. And especially if you're working with different uh, skin variations from a very dark pattern to a very fair skin pattern, it's still going to have a variety of colors within it. And if you're doing, like if when I'm drawing my hand, I'm still adding the blues for the veins, the blood for the, the blood vessels, and uh, mixtures of all that, including yellow. And you'll be surprised how many colors are in your hand when you draw them. Now, I'm going to move down into this section here. So the knuckle of each finger lies halfway from the tip of each finger to the bottom of the palm. So what that means is this middle knuckle is going to be halfway down your from the tip of your finger to the base of where it, it comes out of the palm. So that middle knuckle is almost always going to be right in the center or right below. And I'm not talking about the middle of the, the knuckle, the top line of the knuckle. So sometimes it's a little harder to see, but the, the last digit, the little one that usually houses the nail on the other end, is typically a bit smaller than the other two knuckles. And these two are usually roughly, oops, I'm doing it opposite. <laughs> these two are usually roughly the same size, where the top digit is usually just a, a little bit smaller. Now, obviously this will be varied per person. Some people have very long spider fingers, and sometimes the proportions are a little different. And some people have really, you know, short, stubby fingers. Mm. Uh, it, it's all a variation. Uh, I you'll spider fingers. Yeah, you definitely have spider fingers. Yeah. Which I prefer drawing spider fingers, like the very long, accentuated uh, ones, because they could either be very elegant in the way you pose them, or they could be very creepy and scary. And I feel like I enjoy dabbling in both of those realms when I draw. So the the last thing I want to mention in this reference is. Uh, the middle bottom, which is simplifying the hand into three areas. And this is going to be very important when we're getting into actually drawing them, because whenever I draw a hand, I always think of the fingers, the pentagon, and the thumb. The pentagon is essentially roughly the shape of your palm, and uh, I will do better, I'll, I'll line it out on the or on the Cintiq when we uh, start drawing. But you can think of the pentagon as a flat top, and the fingers each extend off of the pentagon, and then the thumb sits on the bottom half of the side of the pentagon. So if you can start it off with a thumb, you, or with a pentagon, you can usually draw the other remaining digits, but the thing that throws artists off is perspective. And we'll talk about how to draw hands in perspective a little bit, but honestly, I think that could be a more advanced live stream that I could talk about uh, drawing things in perspective, because hands can look really cool in perspective, or really awful. The difference, like, okay, let me do, if you can see on my camera, so a cool hand in perspective would be something like this. It has a cool reach out, you can see the muscles flaring here, you can draw some overlapping fingers. A really bad uh, hand in perspective would be something like this, you know, something that's kind of just garbled up. You can't see the arm, and it just would create a really weird drawing if this is how you drew it. So when you draw something in perspective, I just be careful with how you're accentuating the hand and making sure that it doesn't distract the viewer from the overall composition. Uh, before I move on, is there any questions that are you feel are good for? Um, related to this at the moment? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know, Anthony said check out Yohan Lasso. He's a French artist who's like Muka but has his own original style. Oh, yes. He's great. No, I definitely know who that is, and I follow him on Instagram. Hmm. Um, well, Matt says um, he loves its uh, cynics, right? Yep. Um, I've learned a lot about faces from him as well. 
you know what, I'll put his name in the chat for you guys. So his name is Cynix, and he does uh, tutorials specifically aimed at artists that are uh, pushing for more of a dynamic pose or dynamic angles. And he does a lot of great tutorials about uh, body proportions and anatomy. So I would definitely go check him out. Okay, so moving on. What was the next thing I have here? We are gonna, oh, so yes. Yeah, so these are the two hands below that we are going to be working on. So if you are gonna be drawing alongside me, the reference one and reference two image are the hands that we're gonna be drawing both targeting the top of the hand and the bottom of the hand, but both in a pose. But before we do that, I wanted to talk a little bit about the hand on the top and the palm side. Let me make sure you guys can see this. I'm gonna make a new layer here. Use my chalk brush because I like it. So I'm gonna go through the points that I wrote down here and then we will get into the actually drawing it. So if you are kind of ready to draw, just hang on a little bit more, and I'm going to explain some things, and then we'll get into drawing. So the first thing I want to talk about, the pentagon. How do you see it? So, oops, I want a color. What color should I choose? Um, blue. Blue? We'll do a nice blue. So the pentagon. This is the pentagon and every hand has one unless you're missing some digits i know my dad is missing his pinky but for the most part everyone has oh, what am i doing oh my gosh tim <laughs> there we go Jeez. so sometimes it can be a little more extended like even this is more like that And you can see how there's five sides. Same with this one. So essentially, when you can map out the Pentagon and start to know how big the, the length of each side should be, you can then put where the digits will go. So in this case, pick another color. Uh, green. Do green. Forest green. Forest green? Forest green. Probably more like that. Yeah, that's pretty. So when I do the digits, usually when I'm drawing, or you know what, first I'll, you know, I'll do the fingers. So normally when I do the fingers, I do them in sections. Same with this side. And from there, I'll kind of draw each digit out Mind you, this is not the way that I'm recommending you have to do it. This is just something I like to do when I'm drawing my hands. Or I'll literally do each finger one at a time. Whichever one you're feeling, it kind of just depends. Oh, even this. I'll draw the middle digit and the bottom one. Now, the problem with drawing these two separately is oftentimes there's not really a pronounced knuckle in between that um, space. So instead, you'll see a lot of artists just do one uh, kind of bigger digit. And then when they actually shade it, they'll draw in the little line where you know the digit bends. For me, I'm looking at all of the nuances that the finger has. So you know, I'm gonna pull the layers on. I wasn't gonna have the layers on the screen, but I think I do want the layers on the screen. So you can see, even with the pinky, the best thing that I was told about drawing anatomy was from a random person at a convention they told me that the human body has no straight lines and that that stuck with me. And whenever I look at any part of the body that I'm drawing, I notice how there's always a little subtle movement and curve curvature to it. So even this pinky, you can see how it has just a slight warble. And this is something that usually animation artists will pronounce and they like extend. And that's why, you know, you see hyper knuckles in anime. But typically when drawing realism, uh, you, you want it to be very nuanced. And this is something that you can pronounce, and then as you kind of create your own style, go for it. You can have crazy big knuckles and you know long fingers that don't actually align up realistically, but it doesn't matter because it fits your style. But I think it's good to at least learn realism, especially with anatomy and proportion first, 
and then break away from it as you're kind of finding your own style. So, the last thing, one more color, Shoa. Ooh, let's go for a pink. A pink? Yeah. Let's do a pink. There we go. So now the thumb is what I would consider the hardest part of the hand, because this can make or break a hand looking good. The thumb is similar to a hand, but the knuckles are way different than uh, how, the, how you would think they would look. So let's look at this thumb area. So technically this is a joint and then this is a joint similar to this one and this one. One, two, one, two. But oftentimes this second one gets kind of melded into the flow of the thumb, which is totally fine, but I just recommend having a little bit of a bump to show that the, the joint is there and there is a knuckle type appendage uh, beneath the skin. And then I usually try to have a little bump here as well. Now nails are a whole beast on their own. Usually this can also make and break a hand because if I see someone over uh, detail or over contrasting the nail and the values are really heavy, it just breaks the illusion of a realistic uh, hand to me. Unless if you're drawing nail polish that is black, <laughs> then it could make sense. But oftentimes, if I turn this hand to grayscale, this is usually the best uh, way to look at it. You can see how the value between the nail and the skin is almost nothing. You know, there is definitely some highlight and you can see some variation of the values, but really there aren't that many. And uh, when I draw nails, I'll hint at the edges of them, but I won't give them a full dark outline because that's what will uh, make it look like a fake nail that's pressed on or you know nail polish of some kind. <laughs> I always like I'm seeing like, you look at your nails. <laughs> right? I'm like, wait, I never really noticed that bump before. Which one? The one by the thumb right there. Well, here's the weirdest part, ready? So it's not only these two, but then there's a third one. What? Do you see it? Yeah, it's like your thumb isn't <laughs> standing up straight or something. Yeah, the thumb's one. <laughs> I think that's why a lot of people get stuck on the thumb, because the other thing, the thumb doesn't face the same direction as the other fingers. So if you think about it, I guess we're kind of, well, no, we're still talking about thumbs. When you look at your hand, all your fingernails are usually facing towards you. And if, you know, if you're not in a relaxed pose, if you're in an extended pose, your thumb is just lazy eyeing toward the other direction. And that's because the thumb can bend inwards, but then it bends out where all, I mean, all the fingers bend towards the center of the palm. That's why when you bend them, they all kind of find that center point and they intersect. But when they bend out, the thumb's weird because it's an opposable thumb where obviously your other fingers can't have as much range and motion. So your thumb can create way more different uh, poses and uh, drawing that can be a bit tricky. So your thumb, I treat as a whole separate entity. So basically, always remember these three, and that will help start you off. Let's see here. I'm going to cross these off as I talk about them, so I can always <laughs> know where I did my talking. Webbing. This is a thing I mentioned in the little tutorial. Fotch. We'll just go over it here, so you can kind of see. Where is... Did I draw on the image? Oh, well... Give me a second while I undo like crazy. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay. So webbing, like I mentioned, you can't really see on the bottom side of the hand, but you can definitely see the webbing here on this hand. Now, when I draw hands, I very much accentuate these, especially the pinker, pinky dip. And that's because it is the deepest valley out of the, the three that you can draw. And the middle one, I usually have either be really tight or so small that you can't even see it because the fingers intersect. Because I'm one of those trash kids that like to draw the two fingers connected in the center, like a Tumblr artist. And it creates this really cool, elegant look, in my opinion. But all of my fingers usually have that pinky out, the two fingers basically touching each other, and then this, uh, what one is this, the pointer finger, just kind of free hanging. Uh, but usually I do like having my two center finger is kind of connected. Because if you try to connect the other two, there's a little bit more of a strain. So it's a, a bit more unnatural unless if you're specifically going for that position. 
but the middle one having the two fingers together is a very relaxed pose. And I try to have my hands either be very relaxed or very intentional. And if you have a very intentional hand, like if it was something like this, obviously you're posing the hands and there's intention behind it. So remember to add the webbing and uh, kind of accentuate it. Bones. So I have very bony fingers. I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna age horribly, my hands will look scary, and I'm so excited because those are my favorite hands to draw. And when you're thinking of bones, here is the best way to think about them. So when you look at your hand, sometimes you can see it, if you have, especially if you're older, but uh, if you have more pronounced bone structures in your hand, they usually connect somewhere here and it's uh, their digits, or they're kind of, I don't want to say like poles, but when you're drawing them, you can imagine, uh, this is gonna be too difficult of a reference for me to try to explain because I just ordered a hand from a guy in Australia that, that makes like finger hands and they're really long uh, fingers. But each of them are on a pulley system. So essentially you can imagine a little rope on each of these and then it would pull the next digit down and that's how our hands work you know they're pulling so rather than getting a little too scientific with it just know that there are these four bones in your hands and sometimes they're more pronounced and though they create little valleys on the top of the the skin where on the bottom side you really don't see the bones much at all but you definitely see them pronounced because the bones are closer to the top side on the hand and I try to just I don't try to fully detail them and draw every shadow that the bone creates. I allude to it without it being uh, too overbearing. And oftentimes if you have dramatic light, that's where you can really see the bone structure. But I, I try to keep it more subtle. So maybe if I was doing this, I would, and obviously not with pink, but with pencil, I would probably pronounce these areas, maybe a little there, and then that's it. And then on the thumb as well, you can see how we have this double valley going on. So that's where I would really pronounce the bone structure, but not too much more than that. And then even with the, um, the fingers, I try not to have the bones showing too much. Sometimes I'll, I'll show a little bit of uh, where the knuckle is, maybe a dip, but oftentimes I, I try to stay away from it and I focus more where the, the knuckles there are. The next one is spread. So when I, I'm talking about spread, I'm talking about when you're spreading your fingers, you can see how the most distance you can get is usually between the pointer finger and the thumb, and then your pinky and your ring finger. So these areas, I usually try to, when I'm doing a pose, or I'm, I'm posing my hand, I try to not only put in the pose, but then I'll push it further. So if you're drawing a hand, let's say it's just a simple, like relaxed hand, let me see a good one like this. Rather than having it be as simple, if I wanna pose it and make it a little more interesting, I'll push that pinky up and it creates a little bit more of a dynamic pose because of the range that your pinky has as compared to your uh, three the middle fingers. And obviously your thumb, you, you definitely wanna use that range if you can. But basically, uh, the spread also kind of talks about how the, the line of the hand doesn't sit on the same horizontal line. Instead, it's curved and the fingers are slightly pointed in different directions. Not by much, but they are all going a slightly different direction up. And obviously the thumb is its own uh, black child or black sheep of the family and that child's being pointed in a whole different direction. He doesn't wanna follow the, the norms that his siblings are going in. And then from here, the middle fingers, I talked about that, I like to keep them glued together. The wrist, okay. The wrist is very important because when you're connecting your arm to your hand, oftentimes people keep it so straight and rigid that there's no nuances. But you gotta remember, there are two prominent bones right below your hand on either side. These are bones you want to draw because they add a level of realism that we wouldn't get otherwise. So I always think of these as two rotator balls and you just wanna give a little hint of them while you're drawing. Just a little bit of a curve. Uh, and these can be great when you're drawing a hand pose that is more limped like this or more creepy. Think of the hand from the Adams Family, the crawling it, uh, what is it, uncle it or cousin it? 
Cousin it. Cousin it. Yeah. Or oh, is that the thing with the hand or the hair? What's the hand's name? The butler. No, oh, all I got is what's his face from Scary Movie Man now with the hand. Oh yeah, a strong hand. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the the hand and the wrist in the Adams family hand, it has such a prominent curve here, and then it cuts off like right here. But it really showcases that wrist, and I, I think about that a lot when I'm drawing my wrist and how prominent you want to make it. The next one are the pads of the hands, which are usually the fatty part on the palm. You really want to draw, the fattest part is right here. Usually you'll see it drawn in two eggs type circles. Why am I doing it? I'm like doing it on the camera when I have Photoshop <laughs> right in front of me. So usually this area and this area are considered two of the fattest part of the palm, and then the right under the first, uh, where the digits, the fingers, uh, come out of the palm. And those I always try to accentuate a little bit more. And by that, I mean I usually have a bit of shading in this area. And I always, always create, oop, leg, don't you happen on me today. <laughs> I try to, oh no. But you know what? It's not that bad. So I try to focus on that. And then here I'll push some more of the shading. But the thing I always try to draw is a little separation between the very prominent line right under your hand, right where the fat pads kind of end. And I'll usually have just a hint of empty space in between the pads and the line. And then I'll shade a little bit. And then there will be that next line. And obviously, it'll be easier to show this when we're drawing, but adding those little differences and details make the person viewing your drawing, um, gives it the illusion that you understand realism and you're catching those details that may often get overlooked. So I think uh, the pads are very important to draw. So don't draw your hands as like these bony, uh, like a skeleton covered in wax. You, you definitely wanna add some fatty tissue to your hands. Lines. The it's lines the on your hand. Thing, for the record. Thing. Yeah, Thank you. it is. Yeah. It is the thing. It's the thing. So lines on your hand are very important. Oh, oh, well, thank you, Lunar Kitty Cute, for donating $5. Oh, shout out to any artist friend. Oh, no. At Liv the Puppet on Instagram, she's too big of a coward to tell you that she loves... Oh. oh. I need to keep these on longer. Or is it in the chat? It doesn't show up in chat, but I'll have it in a second. Oh, that's um, so strange. It doesn't show up in chat. But thank you so much. Oh, and you get your bell. She loves your videos and thanks for your art. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you to what was the name of the, the person she was shouting out? Uh um at Live the Art. If you could just put it on the yeah. chat. <laughs> just do the little uh, thank you, there. thank you so much though. <laughs> uh, it does mean a lot to me. And we're very oh, we're getting really close to we're pat we're at the halfway point for the plant stream. Right? So thank you, thank you guys. Let's play a game. I know, and I'm probably going to play League of Legends. <laughs> so if you're interested in coming and watching a game with me, I'll probably play with Josh. The bar starts going backwards. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, wait, no, we don't want to no. see you play League of Legends. <laughs> so wrinkles and double wrinkles. Oh, what did I mean by double? Oh, yeah, in the fingers. So you can see here how oh, there's a single wrinkle for the most part, and then a double. Now, in some areas, that wrinkle is broken up. Like this one's a little more like that. This one kind of has a double, but not really. And you don't have to be a palm reader, but everyone has slightly different variations of lines on their hands. I'm not going to focus on drawing those as much. I think if you're doing hyperrealism, yeah, of course it's good to look at that, but I would definitely use reference. But for the most part, the only lines that you really should know are these. Maybe the ones on the hands too. Those are generally the ones you can draw, but even this can be simplified. So the only thing I would look at that is when you're doing very gestural drawings, you can add those lines as a quick gesture to kind of show where the pads are in the thumb or in the palm. Because the other thing you got to point out is when you start to contort the hand, all of a sudden it'll change the entire shape of what you're drawing. And uh, you want to be careful to not draw really complex hands when you're starting off. You want to start drawing hands in a very simple pose and make sure you understand everything that you're drawing first and then start to move on. Because as you get into more advanced poses and things are bending and twisting, uh, it will probably make your drawing look just as bent and twisted but in a bad way. 
So I would focus on drawing simple hands. The last thing that I wrote down before we get into drawing here, oh, we're, oh, we're right on time, this is perfect, is you can either draw simplified hands or detailed ones. Like I said before, I think it's good to learn realistic hands first, but when we're simplifying them, and I'll show them a little bit when I'm on the iPad, uh, you can definitely break down the hand into just a few simple shapes, and that will help uh, drive uh, faster efficiency when you're drawing characters, especially if you're going to be going into animation or comics, anything where you need to be drawing quick and still make it look good. So we'll, we'll do a little bit talking about that. Obviously, I'm someone that enjoys drawing a little slower and having a little bit more detail, but one is not better than the other. It's just different outputs that you're trying to create. So let's go ahead and start switching things around here. So I put, uh, there's going to be a two minute prep, so if there's any questions, uh, Josh will get those and start getting your pencils ready or pick up your Cintiq pen, <laughs> whatever it is that you want to be doing these hands in. And I, I would love it if you could submit them, so when you are finished drawing them, post them in the Discord link below, and I'll do a live critique near the end of this. Um, <clears throat> book stress, it was earlier that this was asked, but... As what criteria will you be judging the hands on? Oh, it's. I don't want you to see it as a judging. I want it to be as a constructive criticism. So I'm going to be looking. Oh, I see what they mean. Is it going to be more toward realism or like stylized? Honestly, submit whatever you're feeling. I'm not going to be uh, harsher on someone that has a more simplified hand than someone that's going for a realistic hand. Because I think even with people that are doing simplified hands or more animated looking hands, you can still critique it. Uh, I'll just make sure I cater it to that style and that direction that you want to go in. So yeah, and literally any hands. I'm I'm definitely one of those artists that I believe the range of art is limitless. And even though I do have a, I I would say a more uh, a sharper eye in terms of what the things I enjoy and the art styles I appreciate and love, I definitely can appreciate a. Uh, you know, a hand that's very simple, has very stylized fingers, versus a hyper-realistic oil painting of a hand. You know, I might get something more out of the person that works with crayons and has a crazy color palette that they worked with than I would with a hyper-realistic hand. So I, I don't prefer one over the other in terms of um, it looking realistic. But I can definitely critique something that is going for realism more because then you can point out proportion issues or things like that. So don't honestly don't feel that much pressure. I'm gonna be I'm a very nice critiquer. I know how to be constructive and firm, but still not make someone feel awful about their work. And that's always a goal of mine because I think artists should be building each other up, especially someone that's taking the position of trying to teach and help. So yeah. Okay. Uh, so the two minutes will start now. I'm going to start prepping my iPad. And then Josh, if you have any good questions you want to ask out. Oh, yeah. We'll keep going. Because um, Drea had a good one. Let me find that one. Um, so the more webbing, the more strain the pose. Question. Uh, off, um, kind of. I mean, if you, if you extend it enough, I mean, just look at your own hand. You can see how the webbing on my hand really shows. But sometimes if you strain it, you know, inward, you don't see any webbing at all. Excuse me. So a lot of the webbing for me is when I strain it outwards and then I kind of look like a merfish person. But often I, actually, you know, I would say yes. Usually if you strain it out, the webbing would be a, a bit more intense. And if you're doing color work and you're doing it like underwater or you have it where the sun would be shining through, a lot of the subsurface scattering would be happening. You know what, That I should put that in my tutorial. Because I did a tutorial on this and I used a hand as an example. So let me find that really quick. Some surface scattering. But you know when you hold up your thumb or your finger to a flashlight? I feel like most people do this when they're kids. And you see the blood vessels through it. That is subsurface scattering. Oof. Okay, let me... <laughs> it's just floating. <laughs> the image is just floating. <gasps> hey, thank you, Quill. Love your... Art, your stream, oh no, this is going to mess it up. Your streams have helped me a ton. Oh, that was it, okay. Oh. Well, thank you so much, Quill. You get the little bell. You get the, you get the bell ring. <laughs> that, was the, that was the cutest way to ring a bell. A little pat, pat, pat. <laughs> Just a little, little touch. Oh, and the emoji bells, touch. too. Oh, yeah, we can do the emoji. Well, thank you so much. 
Um, okay, I found the image. It's just floating on my mouse right now. <laughs> Do you see this right now? It's just ready to be dropped on my desktop. Um, I might have to forego that because it's messing everything else up. <laughs> I don't I'm telling you, I will never not have a stream. I will never not. I will never have a stream where something with technology doesn't mess it's up. Every time. Every time. Without fail. <laughs> I, I think that should be one of the upcoming emojis. By the way, if you guys become a member on my YouTube, you get to use the exclusive emojis. There are six of them currently, but basically every three to five or members that you get or acquire, you get to add another emoji. So I, th I believe I need one or two more members and I can add another emoji. And it is either gonna be a grenade bell in reference to an older stream that happened, or it could be something with me getting frustrated over technology. <laughs> Because this happens every stream. It's literally messing. I can't even change things right now. Try it like double clicking. Um, like do both fingers at once. I don't want to hit escape. Can I move this around? Oh, well. Maybe that reset it over there then. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Uh. Try placing it back on there. <laughs> what the heck, Tim? I'm telling you, I, I'm cursed with technology. This, try, this is why I'm a traditional artist. Uh, try pressing escape, because you're clicked on Chrome, right? Yeah. OK, try. Oh, OK, we're good. Shua, you are a tech wizard. You know, Should I try I just, it again I or know no? my way. Yeah, try it one more time. OK. Oh, oh my. <laughs> We're going to try that one more time. Gentle, gentle. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, oh, yeah, Zuri yeah, Beth yeah. Ortez, for subscribing. You know what? Uh, Josh, could you just link, if you just type in Google CG Cookies subsurface scattering? I can't show you on the stream, but I had an entire tutorial dedicated to subsurface scattering, and I used a hand as a reference. Basically, what I was talking about is when you do your web, if you extend it enough, you could show some of the red and the yellow colors in between the hand. <gasps> hey, thank you, Jim Humble, for becoming a member. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Josh, if you would like to pat the bell. Oh, yes. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Hey. And I'm pretty sure I, I could add another emoji. All right. OK, so I I'm going to pull up. It's a big link, everyone. It won't even let me do it because oh, it's it worked. characters. Hang on. Oof. Okay. Go. I'm just going to be really careful with what I touch on my computer right now. <laughs> so I'm going to move on to this. So, Josh, if you could get a 10-minute timer ready. Um, for all of you that are watching and want to participate, our warm-up session is about to start. We're going to start in probably like 30 seconds. Do you have the timer? Oh, the timer. Go? Yes. So we're going to do 10 minutes of just free sketching. So these are essentially don't draw the hand in the reference pack. The best way I would honestly do these warm-ups is to look at your own hand while you're drawing and then put it in different poses. So I'll do the same thing. It looks really weird to other people, especially if you're at a cafe trying to do this, but they'll understand. I feel like artists get away with a lot. So if you look weird in public, you're an artist. It's fine. Okay. Oof. Oh, yeah, I was about. I was going to do my warm-up earlier, and I was like, oh, I'll save it for the stream. Okay. Hope you are all ready for the warm-up session. All right. Schwa, if you would like to be our timer aficionado. I have it ready. All right. All right. On your mark. <laughs> On Good your marks. shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Timer has started. All right. And then if you could give a warning when it's about five minutes and then two minutes and one. Okay. So I'm going to do a very extended hand. So when I'm doing my hand warm-ups, Focus on gesture more than anything else. Don't worry about details. Don't worry about how clean it looks or how good. And you know what? Purposely, I'm going to make my hand look kind of ugly. And I'm going to focus more on the movement of the hand more than anything. Because I can draw a hand in proportion, but that's not the goal of warming up. The goal of a warm up is to get your hand moving a little bit more fluidly and focusing more on the gesture part of the hand. So I'm going to. Keep moving forward, turning my hand into a Spider-Man pose. So going back to what we were talking before. Terry oh, Terry Sada. Sada. Thank you so much. 
much. <laughs> I almost want you on every stream just so you can ring the bell. <laughs> it's, it's a little rough. It's not the easiest bell to ring. <laughs> I know, right? And it's not the the cleanest sounding. It's not a like cool fantasy sounding bell. It's kind of like a clunky. I'm a cow in a field, and I am ringing my barrel. <laughs> I mean, I joke Being that it's kind of fitting, considering we live in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and I'm a very simple person. Well, I mean, we're both pretty simple, yeah, honestly. I feel like a little shepherd boy. I don't know. <laughs> so usually when people start doing their hands and they're doing the underside, these are the fat pads that I'm talking oh, about. Wait, yeah, I assume your iPad's not showing on the actual stream. Oh, oh no. Fade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, guys. Do we want to restart? No, 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 no. Keep going. Out there, okay. Yeah. Um, basically, I was just pointing out these pads here where, you know what? I'm going to even really pronounce them just so you guys can see. Because during the warm-up phase, something that I don't do enough is I care too much about my warm-ups looking pretty. And that's something that you don't want to be doing because you oftentimes move slower and you're, you're focused more on the details more than the overarching. Like even right now, that thumb, that was way too much focusing on the detail, and that's why it looks like chicken scratchy. So instead, I'm going to go back into the mode I was in before, focus on shapes, focus on the movement, because then once you get into uh, putting in the details, then you can focus on how things look in proportion to one another and all that jazz. But right now, it's going to focus on the shape. And I'm not going to linger too long on any one of these. Maybe like 30 seconds each and then move it and draw one at a side angle. So Cynix likes to do this thing with triangles where he'll put it in triangle and then I believe it's something like this. I haven't watched it in a long time though, but I believe it's something along these lines. And his whole idea is a fundamental look at breaking anything down into a shape. And he primarily focuses on triangles, and that's how he, his mind worked. It's similar to Kim Jong-ji. He works in squares or in a box. He can picture anything in a box, and that's how he draws literally everything, and that's how he gets things in perspective. So for me, I'm kind of weird. I like to draw things in a circle. Oh, I don't know why my Photoshop's jumping that much. Oh, there we go. I like to draw things in spheres, and that's why oftentimes my things look a little more curvy or round than they probably should. And that's why I'm trying to work more with angular stuff because this really does help me kind of sharpen edges on things where sometimes my stuff looks a little too catered to being a perfect ratio circle or a, a spiral, and I want to break away from that a bit. I heard you oh. giggling in the background. Was there something funny? Because I did wholly just did a dad joke. Oh, what was your dad joke? Because Rachel pointed out um, that the iPad screen wasn't on there. So I was, I was like, thanks for doing that. I was like, could say thanks for lending a hand. I know I have <laughs> them and <laughs> candor, everyone. Josh, I got to hand it to you. That one was pretty it's good. all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> You've done this to me. You know what? I'm going to change the pose <laughs> midway. And even further express how much I don't care about these warm-ups. Um, I did a tutorial back in the day on CG Cookie 2 uh, talking about the, the importance of throwaway drawings. And it's not that you're supposed to specifically throw the drawing in the actual trash, but uh oh. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Class, we have five minutes left. I feel like I should put on my glasses. Makes me feel more studious. This is the academic way of learning. <laughs> Thank you for coming to the live stream. I'm going to keep them down like a professor. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay, back to the weird drawing. So when you start to block out a lot of the hand, I'll start them looking at the secondary details, the inside of the hand. So my the bone and the vein within here, I'll start to look at little bumps and curves within the palm, or the top side of the hand, hand, handy, yeah. handy, yeah. and then move on. So remember, these aren't supposed to look 
perfect. Just keep moving on. Try to draw a bunch of them. Oof. I'm going to draw. Ooh, this is an interesting pose. Hope you guys are doing well with your warm-ups as well. I don't know why my reference image keeps flickering. Just try to ignore that and just add it to the pile of things of technology not working exactly right for me. Oh, I forgot to mention, I have a stream tomorrow on drawing the club of, or the club, the jack of clubs, and I'm going to be specifically talking about drawing a person of color and how to layer values to create a darker skin tone, because he is a about a black teenager, like early 20s maybe, and I'm going to show how to draw uh, his complexion and then talk about how I created the, the Jack of Clubs in general. I'll probably, if I finish that pretty early, because I'm usually pretty quick at drawing skin, I'm gonna uh, start drawing the elements around him. He's got an apple that he's holding, or maybe an orange or a mango, and then I'll draw some grapes. So it'll just be a fun stream. But then the one that I really wanna talk about is on Friday, I'm doing my first artist interview and insight with Babs Webb. Uh, could you link to Babs oh, Webb's yeah. Instagram in the chat? So Babs is one of my favorite artists and a, a dear friend of mine. She is very spooky ooky and can, she makes me laugh on a dime. Uh, she's great. And I'm going to be doing an interview with her. I got some really good questions pulled up. But not only is she a pretty pronounced artist, but I'm going to be talking and looking at art that she's done, you know, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, asking her questions that usually artists want to know of. When did you notice the breakout point in your work? What piece of yours did you say you went from an amateur artist to a professional artist? And can you, you know, expunge upon that? Oh. Two minutes left. <laughs> two minutes, two minutes. <laughs> so for my last, I'm going to do maybe one or two more hands here. I'm going to do a very stylized looking hand. Uh, so that interview will be on Friday. And I should also point out, I got a message this morning on Instagram from my next interview, which will be from an artist known as Gary Villarte, better known as Villarte on Instagram. So that will be on April 10th, I believe I scheduled it for. And he is another fantastic graphite artist. Oh yeah, if you could get Villarte's oh, as yeah, well. I'll that on there. Uh, he is someone that I have talked to you on the back end for a while now. I feel like a lot of pencil artists just kind of know each other and... Uh, we're just, we're, you know, we're good chums on the Instagram uh, uh, chat box. And eventually I would like to also have my other pencil inspirations of Alan Williams and Miles Art on the stream. So Down to a minute. Uh, one minute left. Oh, no. And uh, I really want to get my other friend Pete on here, too. Pete is, I would consider, one of the best living digital artists today. And I would love for him to talk some insight about doing digital art and... Uh, kind of change it up from it only being pencil stuff. Because as much as I love traditional pencil work and learning more about it, I feel like I, I often learn more from mediums that aren't the one I'm most comfortable in. So I learned a lot from Annie and Justin Gerard when I went to the workshop two years ago, and they taught me a lot about oil painting, but their, the way that they do their process taught me a lot about uh, my own process and what I could be improving upon and how to use references. So I think it's good to get a mixture of a bunch of different uh, styles and uh, artists on here. So that is my goal with the uh, artist interviews and insights. And now that we're in lockdown and everyone's at home anyways, I feel like it's a good time to uh, start these up because this has been right. something I want to do for a while. Time is up. Oh, time's up. Ah, finish that hand. Okay. Whew. Okay. So as you can see, my hands are garbage, and that's okay. These are warm-up drawings. I was not focusing on how good they were. I was trying to focus on shapes. I still sometimes focus a little too much on the details, but that's okay. That's what a warm-up's supposed to do, kind of break you into the mindset of doing it. And let's see, what do I have? The Okay, so we're going to do the first reference as a drawing. So I'll give you guys like 30 seconds to catch your breath, or if you need to go to the bathroom, you got 30 seconds. Go. You better pee quick. <laughs> And then the image that's flickering on my screen is reference one. You can download that in the Discord pack below. But that's the one we're going to do first. And we're going to give probably 
about 20 minutes on each of the references. And then I'll do the critique of your guys' hands, and then I'll do a pencil one to end it off. Because I have a pretty fun pose that I want to do. So the one that I want to do as a pencil one... Oh, did it not save on here? Oh, oh, no. oh wait, wait. Yes, it did. So the one that I want to do in pencil is that. <laughs> And I kind of want to show something that's a little more gaudy, and it doesn't have to be that difficult. Even though these hands look kind of strange and might take a while to draw, it's really not. And I'm going to kind of break the illusion that uh, drawing hands is that difficult. So like I said, just take your time, draw a lot of them, and you'll get more comfortable with it. That's such a Tim pose. You know I'm gonna... <laughs> that is the most Tim pose, like a super mooka, like, oh gosh. I, I always tell people, though, I grew up in a Catholic church, and a lot of the visual medium that I was surrounded with, especially in cathedrals, were very much posed angelic uh, imagery, and I, I've always been drawn to it. I always loved the look of um, that imagery, especially there were a, a bunch of tapestries that I saw with uh, Virgin Mary, and the way that they always decorate her is usually a very humble but usually like with a very specific hand pose, either holding a scepter or something, and then these very beautiful golden rays behind her head. And it's something that's always attracted me. So sometimes when I look at my art as um, an overview, I can definitely see the influence of my past being poured into my art of today. And even with my mom's side of the family, my the Buckley side of my life, uh, that's the last name I wish I had. But honestly, Vaughn kind of worked out for me because <laughs> now that's like my whole... Um, marketing thing. But um, the Buckley side, she grew up in Gary, Indiana, and not the most wealthy. Uh, and going to my grandpa and my grandma's house, uh, it was very close to the oil fields. It was very close to a train station. So whenever I would go to bed, I could always hear the midnight trains. And I'll always remember the look inside their house where nothing felt modern. Everything either was made out of metal or tin or... Uh, it was like the pre-plastic era, and I feel like my grandparents stuck to that. So when I draw things, especially for swordplay, I don't want curved, smooth items. When I draw a luggage, I want one of those old ones with the metal hinges on the side and little bolts going down it. I love the look of old, traditional, uh, handmade, handcrafted things from the earth, you know, made from the earth uh, look. Anyways, let's move on. <laughs> Sometimes when I ramble, I can just go. Oh, yeah, and then make sure, too, because Drea actually was able to post uh, the warm-up sketches on Discord. So, yeah, yes. feel free to post those there, too, because everyone can see them then, too. Yeah. It's kind of fun. And the community is great. It's a community that specializes in wanting to get better with art. Oh, well, thank you, Odette Memiko, for oh, subscribing. Thank you for the subscription. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I really should get that on a string that we can, like, buoy back and forth or right. zip line back and forth just so like that... have it auto do it though it just <gasps> automatically knows i i'm not that tech savvy oh my gosh what if we had a button that we could push and then the bell would like loop around <laughs> just go around the... <laughs> walk our heads a few times oh that'd be so fun um but yes post it in the discord josh is right everyone can then see it and we can discuss it later well especially with these that we're about to draw um rachel says, have you ever considered an interview with Wiley Beckert? She has such an... Absolutely. Are you kidding? She is one of those I met back when I was a wee babe, and I went to Spectrum. <laughs> when I first met Ellen Williams, I also first met Wiley Beckert. She didn't even really have much of a booth. She was giving her art away for free as a poster that she would then sign because she was, at the time, marketing her deck that she was working on, which is now considered the most successful um, artist illustration deck, and I still consider it to be one of the best illustrated decks. Even though I'm illustrating my own, I still look at Wiley's as a tier above me because she did two uh, flips where I'm doing a mirror flip, so I'm only drawing one image and then flipping it. But yeah, I would love to have Wiley on, especially talking about a card deck. I should do that after I kickstart my deck. Just bring her on and talk about the process of making a card deck. That is a perfect that idea. Should. That is, I will reach out to her, see if I can make that happen. <laughs> Rachel's got her back today. Mm -hmm. um, Jim just asked, are you an Alan Lee fan? Um, to be honest, the name doesn't ring any bells for me. But I feel like, did he work in movies? Why does Alan Lee sound familiar to me? 
Oh, he did Lord of the Rings stuff. Oh. Well, that's cool. Bada bang, bada boom. Well, I, I'm sure he did more than that, but I just saw that right away because I'm starting to watch those to be movies honest, again. I'm not familiar with his work, but this is lovely. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, this is right down my alley. Any any fantasy type illustrator that has a very old, um, desaturated look to their work, I love. Oh, I love, love, love it. His uh, Middle Earth stuff so good. Oh, yeah, that's great. That image is great. But anyways, I know. We got to get started on the next hand. So if you could set a 20-minute timer. Yes. I'm going to go take a quick break then once I set this. I'll be right back. Okay. So guys, we're going to have 20 minutes for our first reference hand. You can pull that up and let's get started. That makes me so happy Lord of the Rings fans artist. That was so good. All right. Yeah, okay. get started. <laughs> All right. I'll do a 10 minute. We'll be the first announcement. Yeah. So when drawing this hand, oh, this, it's going to block my view. Wait, right, right there. So when drawing this hand, this one has a very clear pentagon. So we're going to focus on that shape first. Now remember, the thumb is going to be its own separate little entity. You know what? I'm going to work with a bigger brush, though, so you guys can see this better. So mind you, we're going to try to work a little quicker to start off with, and then we'll start detailing later. So just block in all the shapes first. So looking at this thumb. Now, when working digital, I feel like there is also the advantage of if you do need to liquefy things and push and pull, you can. But I recommend trying to avoid that as much as possible when you're learning, because that way you're not relying on the trick of uh, the digital uh, liquefy tool, but instead on your own uh, technique and skill set. I thought you were going to take a break. I am, sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, Rachel, Rachel, I'm sure you know Rachel, Rachel, Rachel Reichenberg. So I met her at Dragon Con. She does really cool wood burning. Oh yeah. Yeah. She and went to the workshop. Workshop, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, welcome, welcome. I didn't know it was, that was the Rachel that was being mentioned. Well, hello, hello. There's an Alan Milo sketchbook. I need that. <laughs> I mean, during Corona time, let's focus right. on <laughs> essentials and necessities. I literally almost bought, I have it in my Etsy cart right now. There's an artist, oh, what's his name? Oh my gosh. Um, Iris just posted on her story. I think his name's Oliver something. And on Etsy, he's now selling these fantasy sculptures. And they're like door, yeah, look at my cart. They're these, uh, oh. oh, oh, what's his name though? They're gorgeous, but I, I decided I'll wait Oliver. until Oliver Villoninta something. Yeah. But he does these wall plates, and um, they're these fantasy creatures that are just just so well sculpted. And he made resins of them that now you can buy. So as soon as the situation with Corona goes down a little bit, and we can kind of figure out financial stuff more, I'm going to go ahead and definitely pick one up. <laughs> I'm definitely an artist that likes supporting other artists for sure. At every con, I usually always buy a couple things because uh, I, I can't expect other artists to support me if I'm not even supporting them. And I feel like, like I said earlier, we got to you know build each other up. I, I don't like when artists are uh, too competitive with each other. I mean, I love competition. But when you start literally dragging them through the mud, I think that's when it can get kind of ugly. <laughs> I'm going to be right back then. Okay. Was she sleeping over there? Yeah, she's curled up in the blankets. Her baby cat's sleeping mm -hmm. in the floor over here. It's so weird drawing on an iPad after drawing uh, tradi traditionally primarily for so long. Or at least doing like close-up studies such as this. Now I can already tell I need to be way more conscious of my proportions here. And you know what? Because 
this is a teaching opportunity, I'm going to show that I'm not going to use liquefy because I could easily push and pull some of these proportions right now. I'm going to choose not to and correct them the old-fashioned way where you just erase it and then you try again. There we go. So now sometimes I like to do spatial awareness. So I can already tell one of my bumps is off. There is a bump on the bottom of the hand and it kind of aligns with the finger right above it. So that's how I can usually adjust and fix things is I look at the space and the elements around what I'm working on and then I can usually tell if something feels off or not. So that one's more like there. Thumb angle goes a little further out. And I also try to stay a little further back from my drawing. That's why you can, I look kind of weird because I'm like this. But sometimes I get too close to my drawing. And when you're in the detailing phase and you're, you know, edging things out, this is wonderful. But to start off, I really try to get my proportions down. And by staying zoomed out, it usually helps out quite a bit. So I'm like, this finger should be pointed more up. And then when Josh gets back, we'll take a look at um, any comments or questions. If you're struggling already with this hand, it can kind of help you out. Or if there's an area that you're feeling is kind of rough for you, take a look at it. Now I have a very skinny arm and wrist, so sometimes when I draw my own hand, it looks a little strange at first. But then once you start to add in all the other little details, it comes together. So now for nails, kind of like what I was talking about, I'll just like subtly hint at them. Remember that your fingers are basically cylinders. All, everything that you draw can be broken down into four simple sh forms. I kind of mentioned this last stream, but it's a sphere, a cone, a cylinder, and a cube. And fingers are obviously cylinders. So when you're drawing the fingernails, you want the nail to go in the same direction of the cylinder, or at least the base of it. That will help give a more realistic fingernail look. Now for those of you who are joining late, uh, you can download these reference packs in the Discord link below and you can go ahead and draw alongside of us and we'll be doing some live critique after we draw both of them. She was recommending some really good <coughs> Lord of the Rings art books and sketchbooks. Don't tempt him. <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> I just started watching. I usually watch those movies once a year. I love the book, though, or books. They're just so good. All right, really quick, uh, if you're working digital, something that I, I like to do is I like to do a first pass. I turn the opacity really low, and then I'll do a clean pass on top. Another one of the beauties of working uh, digitally. So here's where I'll really take my time with the little bumps, the nuances going down. Oh, I told them if they have any questions specifically about the hand, yeah, they can ask them and I'll do my best to answer oh, yeah. them. Yeah, actually, because Lamont just asked any tips for the fingertips. Yes, so let's, you know what, I'll focus on the fingertips right now then. So, or you know what, I'll edge out each of the fingers first and then I'll do all the fingertips all at once. So here's a good area where some of the a little bit of the webbing happens here. So I'm just gonna push it off. I don't want to distract you guys too much when you're drawing. So I, I won't 
tell you to look here too often. <laughs> Something else that I, I try to do, but I always forget, uh, is, well, who was the artist that told me? They said to draw with intention. So every line that you draw to help minimize doing chicken scratching, which is something that admittedly I do too often, is when you're drawing your line, keep it slower, keep it intentional, or not slower, but keep it fluid, and keep it intentional. So basically, you would know where your line would go, you kind of prep it out before you draw it, and then you draw it. It may seem like this would take more time, but because you're preparing for each line that you put down, oftentimes you can draw faster. And you're kind of simplifying the process, which can definitely lead to it being more uh, efficiently timed. You're at the 10 minute mark, just so you know. Oh, or are we really? Yeah. Ah. Oh, that's right. I wasn't going to draw the tip. Oh, goodbye, Candor. Thank you for joining. Bye, Candor. It's always such an awkward time for you. So really appreciate that you even take the time to come by for a little bit. Yeah, thanks for stopping by, Candor. Candor mm -hmm. is one of our wonderful mods on the Discord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, as always. I am going to look at some of this Alan Lee stuff then. <laughs> okay. All right, then I'm going to draw the tips of the fingers here. So when doing the nail bed, usually there's a bit of a dip. So you can see here, I'll do a dip, and then where the nail begins, and oftentimes this gets pushed over the, the fingertip itself, and then something like that. A little too low. Mm -hmm. uh, Celine says I'm one of those people who generally dislike Lord of the Rings, even if I tried many times and want. And I want to get into the concept art and viz dev, where basically everyone is crazy about this series. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I'm definitely one of those people crazy about the series, but I don't think Tim's as crazy about Lord of the Rings as I am. Surprisingly, I'm not as into high fantasy film as I am to into high fantasy concept. So I'm, I'm still waiting for a film that feels like it merges the two really well. Or, or I don't want to dog on Lord of the Rings either, because I know it started so much, and it has uh, there's theories about how it created the hero's journey and um, put in perspective all these fantasy things that are, have become kind of tropes with people that now rely on, like, elves and uh, dwarves always have axes, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like Lord of the Rings and, uh, what's his name, J.K. Or not J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling. <laughs> Uh, oh, J.R.R. Tolkien. J.R.R. Tolkien. Why do they always have letter names? That's weird. It's like a R.L. Right? Stein. It's like J.K. Rowling. It gives an author like their identity, you know. Apparently. <laughs> uh, so I do. I love the things that it started, and honestly, I like the look of a lot of things. I think the story is, you know, simple. It doesn't wow me. What was the movie? Oh, like we watched. What was it? Uh, Tale of Tales. Oh yeah. To me, visually very intriguing, kind of plays off the idea of it being high fantasy without it feeling tropey. Uh, the stories were all right, but they were so different and new I enjoyed them. So you know what? I will say I do enjoy Lord of the Rings, but since it's become um, so iconic, I feel like it's the base for other fantasy movies to build off of, and I'm kind of curious of where that leads. But I can still respect the source. Oh yeah, I can give a time update. We're at 6 minutes 50 seconds. Ah! Oh, something with nails you don't want to do too often is you don't want to draw that. Do you see what I mean where this can look like a press-on nail? Or if you did... This is where nails can look very strange. So I try to keep it very soft, very subtle. And I look at where the nails kind of dip into the skin. And the skin surrounds it. It's almost like the nails are like pushed into clay. And that's the kind of look around the finger bed nail. Uh, you want to imagine. There's a little bit of uh, thickness around them. Um, Lamont says, in writing, we often talk about the connection of Lord of the Rings creation to the way we engage it with our real life. Tolkien wrote it 
very explicitly as a reflection of some of his experiences. Yeah, I feel like that's why a lot of people relate to them because I think we can find a story or a person that we can mm -hmm. see our own life as like that's our journey and how our life goes. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Fun, Anthony says, fun fact, dwarves are Scandinavian, not Scottish. Oh, hmm. the more you know. Oh, wait, who who does uh, Game of Thrones? George R.R. R. Martin. <laughs> See? All these letter yeah. authors. It just flows. It just flows. I mean, it does make you stand out. But are those pen names or are those their real names? Um... I think some of those are real names, just using initials. I, I don't actually know. I don't think Tolkien used a, a pen name. Okay. I could be wrong on that, though. So now I'm going to get into some shading here because I spent way too much time outlining. We are at the five-minute mark of Ah. Uh, okay. So usually when I shade, this is where it's going to look a little more unrealistic because I pull in some of my own taste. Yeah, no more distractions these last five minutes. And honestly, I kind of wish I did this on the Cintiq over the iPad because I noticed with the iPad I'm so used to drawing like I do a pencil sketch that this is basically how I do my pencil drawings. <laughs> Where I think I do digital so much different than I do uh, my pencil stuff. But that's okay. Because at least I can zoom in and out pretty quickly on, on here without it slowing down my computer. But you didn't like the Hobbit movies, correct? Yeah, and I, I mean, I love the book. The Hobbit book was, I honestly liked it more to the Lord of the Rings just to read because it just had such a warmth to it. But the movies, yeah. I think, though, it was too much. I, I think the CG actually ruined it in that one. I think I it felt too like playing a video game almost. It just didn't feel, feel good. And yeah, Femme says it's just the initials, so John Ronald Rule Tolkien for the full name. Wow, so that is his real name. Yeah. That's crazy to me. What would your pen name be? No, actually, no, don't even think about that. <laughs> My pen name. It'd be something with a pun, I'm sure. It'd be Von Art. <laughs> It'd be like TV Potato. TV Potato. <laughs> TVP. TVP. Nope, you gotta say potato. Gotta say potato. Well, that's the fun of it. They find out the P stands for potato. Or what if it was like Zapato TV potato? <laughs> <laughs> Just make it something fun for people to say. I mean, if you're gonna make it up, might as well make it fun to uh, verbally say. Oh, Anthony says, actually, let me give you guys a time update. We're at uh, 2 minutes 50 seconds. Um, Anthony says, in regard to your question about the names, J.K. Rowling went by that because she didn't think people would buy a book written by a woman. <gasps> yeah. Oh, was... really? I realized she actually modified it. Like, she gave herself that pen name purely just so that it, people wouldn't know wow. just from seeing it. And isn't it now one of the best-selling book? Or, obviously, it's a good-selling book series, but isn't it, like, holding a record currently? It's still, yeah, like, the best-selling book series. Tria says, oh my god, my thumb looks weird, and I don't know why. Yeah, this was, to be honest, this was a bit more of a difficult thumb position because it's so straight out, and it, you can easily see all the bumps on the bottom part of the Pentagon that you can either focus on the bumps or not focus on them, but if you don't, or if you try to focus on them, like even with mine, it looks a little weird. So I, I do want to fix that. But it's yep. good. This is good practice. A lot of warm-up sketches on Discord, too. Thank you, everyone. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys for posting them. I'm very curious to see what you guys were creating. Ooh, my thumb does look also awkward. I should have just done these all in pencil. <laughs> you could do the next one in pencil. Maybe. You could do a switch over. No, I want to save that that really crazy one for pencil. Uh, the other thing that I should have done is draw a little smaller. I'm sure a lot of you guys get in this <laughs> trap too where if you're doing a study or even a warm-up, you draw it really big. So then when you want to finish it, it takes longer than it was initially meant to because you drew it so big. 
uh, to complete it, you also have to complete it big. Um, Lamont, the Discord is not Patreon only. There are Patreon only specific channels on there, but you can still join it, and there's plenty for everyone to for everyone to participate in. Yep. So actually, this will be under current events, and then you'll see the stream hand follow along channel. The only Patreon channels are for seeing uh, behind the scenes look at how I draw stuff and progress picks. So all of my my entire card deck that I'm drawing, you can see all the. The warm-ups, the thumbnails, the in-progress, the finished, the flipped. We uh, have 30 seconds, by the way. Ah! I was trying to get the minute in there you were talking. Oh, my God, my thumb's too short. You know what? I'm going to cheat really quick. I'm going to actually do a, a liquefy. Hmm. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> I know my thumb's supposed to be a little farther out. Yeah, so Lamont, the link is below, but I'll also throw it in the chat too for everyone. Just to get a quick quick click. Oh yeah, good call, thank you. All right, time has hit. Oh, all right. So uh, I can already tell with my hand, there are some uh, issues with the thumb and that's okay. When we're doing studies like this, you want to focus on what you think you did well and what you think you did bad. I think I did pretty well on the back three fingers and the veiny part of the bone, but the thumb definitely needs some work. <laughs> and that's okay. If I had more time, I would keep editing it. The thing I will say is when you're doing a practice, if you're not timing yourself, keep reworking it. Erase as often as you need to. Make it look as good as you possibly can. Uh, one of my teachers told me in grade school something that also, I have a lot of things that stick with me and I, uh, they'll never leave me. It's like glue. Uh, they said that if you sign your name on an assignment or a test and anything that you turn in, if you sign your name on it, you are saying that this is the best you could possibly do on it and you are turning in the best of your capabilities. And that stuck with me because there were definitely some things I would just kind of half try on. And I remember thinking that I'm putting my name on it, so does that mean I'm also kind of lazily um handing something in it, and then it makes me think, wait, am I kind of lazy? And then in high school, my cousins, it was really reinforced with them in the school they went to, but they talked about how anything you do, even in a subject that may not be your favorite, it doesn't matter that you're not good at it, but it matters on how hard you try. So if you're a C student, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're dumb. It just means that's the level of effort oftentimes you're willing to put forth. And that really stuck with me too, because I was like a B plus A minus student, and I remember, yeah, I could have tried a little harder if I wanted to, but I never, I never did try it fully hard. And I think the R's, or the, not the R's, the students that did push themselves and really try their best, not only are they A-plus students, but then when they come, when it comes to life stuff and going into a career, usually that bleeds over into being, um, excelling in whatever, you know, they're doing. It's not always true. You've seen, I've seen a lot of my friends that were horrible in school, uh, you know, horrible grades, but then they excel at the job. But usually it is a reflection of how much effort you're putting into things. And it could be something as simple as keeping your house clean. Usually uh, people that want to put a lot of effort into something, they'll put effort also into keeping their house clean. But then I've also heard that apparently people with uh, OCC, OCD tendencies or perfectionism tendencies usually have a messy room almost on purpose because then it gives them something that they know they can clean up in the future. So usually people that are really clean or really you know, prac or uh, on schedule in life usually have a messy room. I found that really interesting. Anyways, let's move on to the next hand. I should have told you guys to go to the bathroom before I started rambling. There we go. This hand to me is way more fun. I like drawing the palm side of hands than I do the top side of hands. So let's go ahead and get the timer going again for 20 minutes. All right. All right. Okay. Starting right now. So for this one, I'm going to make my screen really small first so I can get the shapes down. The thing that I kind of noticed with my last one is my proportions were way off. So I'm trying to be more gestural to start this one. And actually, if there's any questions at this point, I can answer them while I'm doing this part. Good with questions. Lamont says, I am so scrub at everything ever, but I try hard. Good advice. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's the best we can do is just keep trying hard. 
Because then I had another teacher told me that you don't have to be good at everything. You just have to be really good at a few things to really make it in life. I thought that was interesting too. But it is, I mean, when I look at the things that I'm good at, I mean, a lot of it is art related or stuff on that nature. Um, and that's what I spend most of my time, most of my days doing. And I feel like if you really want to get into something, uh, it doesn't even have to be art. It could be whatever career focus you have. You really have to pour yourself into it if you want to um, succeed. It could be one of the few lucky ones that doesn't don't really have to try that hard and they kind of find a lucky break. More often than not, with the people that I've seen in the art field specifically, you kind of have to work your butt off to, to really make it. And it's a lot of trial and error. I, I always say that the only way you can ever really fail at anything is if you stop trying. And sometimes, though, people need to realize when maybe the thing they're working on isn't what they were meant to do. Because I have some art friends where I think, or I have a really good friend, uh, Tyler, used to be one of my roommates, and he's possibly thinking about going into personal training. And I think he would do really, really well at that. So some t or even my friend Kat, she thought she was going to be teaching Japanese, and she even went to Japan for six months. And then she found her love of doing personal training and fitness and being kind of an influencer in that way. And it really works for her. So don't get flustered if you kind of find yourself not exactly excelling at the thing that you enjoy doing. There are probably many other things that you can enjoy doing. And it might not even be something that is career focused or something that will make you money. And that's been something I've been learning recently. So, you know, keep at it. And I don't want to be like, just be a good person. <laughs> Try hard. But honestly, it does go a long way. And people that are kind and uh, genuinely kind, I think maybe even a little borderline brown nosing, but those are the people I generally enjoy hanging around that I don't keep in my inner circle. And uh, people that just have like a sunny disposition. Simon's a great example. Of, he's in the, uh, or he was in the chat. I don't know if he's still here, but uh, sometimes we play league with oh, him yeah, now. Still here. Yeah. And he's just a good example of someone that is just genuinely enjoyable to talk with because they have this un tiltable personality <laughs> and it's just fun to be around and obviously i really like being around josh because he has a very sunny outlook on life and people as well oh, so I'm, I'm gonna mess this up and i feel like i've seen you before on streams too um zadri Baldo says i have a messy lifestyle and room as well so <laughs> one big mess <laughs> yeah i don't yeah you're you're not in luck there <laughs> I feel like I'm really good at keeping living areas clean, but then the bedroom for me is always just like all my laundry is just in a pile all the time. It's always been like that too. Um, yeah. Drea says, Tim, your wrists are so tiny. I know. I have the tiniest little Tim dainty wrist. Wrist. But then he has these big arms. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> these muscles though. Get oh out of here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um... Simon says, someone who needs things to always look perfect, even when it comes to warm-ups or practice, I tend to find myself struggling to break away from that. Do you have any tips in that area? I'd, to be honest, it's the same thing I struggle with. Uh, I think being actively responsive to when you're focusing on details too much. In, uh, something I, I thought about when I, I taught at CG Cookie was something called consciously thinking. And sometimes you go into autopilot mode when you're drawing, and that's where you're just kind of zooming. You can be having Netflix on in the background. You're kind of paying attention, but not really, because there's a new special on Tiger King that's really interesting. And you just kind of go. But there's other times where you're hyper aware of every stroke that you're doing and what you're drawing. And I think that's where you kind of start to mess up. Uh, not always, but for me personally, I notice I go slower. I tend to make decisions that are not efficient and... Uh, kind of like what you're saying, it's because uh, I read that it's one of the brains, one of the halves of the brains that take over because you have a creative side and you have a more uh, technical side. So I always think that when I'm going slower and I want things to be perfect, the uh, practical business side of my mind is taking over and I need to remember to let go of that and let my creative side come out. And uh, it's scary because even now, I, I tried doing that two days ago and... 
it, I was trying to create forms out of scribbles and make something look uh, good, but I was so focused on creating a form within my scribbles so quickly that I wasn't able to really let go and uh, dive into the realm of trying to be creative and uh, let the art you know, form itself and have it be organically grown. So I think it, it honestly takes practice. I would practice creating pieces that are maybe 20 to 30 minutes long that you don't care about, that you don't care about the outcome. And if something great comes out of it, awesome, you can use it, but have zero expectations going into it. And that way it will help you uh, focus less on the result and more about enjoying the process. That's something I, I do sometimes catch myself uh, with because I need to be enjoying the process more. And when I genuinely do enjoy the process, my work is so much better. <clears throat> oh, Simon. Simon says, all oh, you guys are so sweet and great getting to know you too. Simon's great because I feel like Tim can relate on the art side with Simon as a friend and then I have like personality. Mm -hmm. Simon and me are like twins. I've never met someone that like understands my thought process with everything. Yeah, you two are very similar. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Lamont says, gotta find a way to engage with the world well, then you understand stuff in a context that you can really get into regardless of what it is. It's like finding that voice to see stuff well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Femme says, but Kat is amazing at art, too. Hashtag, it's the same. <laughs> that was so good. Oh, her Sonic. If you guys are in the Discord, if you look at the custom emojis, one of them is supposed to be Sonic. And me and Kat did a challenge back in the day where uh, you're supposed to blind draw something, and hers at the time was Sonic. And she thinks it looks exactly like him. <laughs> but uh, you can be the judge of that. I thought her Sonic was actually pretty good. <laughs> You don't want to see my Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have you on a blind drawing challenge. That would not be good. I would love for you to draw like a Pokemon and just see how it looks out. Oh, I mean, I know I you don't know that Digimon. many. That would be even harder. Are you kidding? Yeah, I'd rather draw. I'd do more Pokemon's Digimon. way easier. I want to draw a little Patamon. It's just a little <laughs> oval. <laughs> I would. Legs. How about this? Without you Googling it, when I'm doing my pencil drawing of the two hands, you draw Patamon blind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Put your money where your mouth is, Schwa. This is something you said you want to draw. <laughs> so I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> I'm just trying to remember if he has a snout. Nope, um, don't look it up. I won't look it up. You know what, though? Out of all the Digimon you could have picked, that's probably the one that you could get. Because if you would have said Gabumon or Gomamon or Palemon, Bioman. No, I like Padmon, yeah. I mean, but those are so much more difficult. Oh, yeah. Padmon's pretty yeah. easy. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can't even get Padmon. <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening. Well, I'm going to try it, but. Maybe this will be the surprise stream where you surprise me and I'm like, oh, dang. That's actually. So you're not going to be surprised. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do a timer check in. Timer check in. 10 minutes, 40 seconds. So I'm going to have a little bit more fun with this hand and do some uh, of my reverse contrast gradation. I like to play with uh, objects that overlap on each other, like these fingers, and push a heavier value on the fingers that are overlaying whatever is underneath of it. <laughs> so I'm going to have fun with this one. There's some hand positions where as soon as you see them, you're immediately like, oh yeah, I can I can do a good job at this one. Or, ugh. Like the last one I was looking at thinking, eh, not the most fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> Drea, what is this middle finger foreshortening though? <laughs> right, we definitely got some, definitely got a little bit of a tricky part over here. Huh? I believe in you guys. <laughs> Simon Schwa is my twin, no lie. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I feel like I don't find those people too often. When Simon and I first played lead together, we didn't do voice chat. So we were just text chatting and 
literally the three, no, four games we played, literally someone, and it was, you know, we were playing with other random strangers. So every time a stranger would be like, are you guys sim role players? I don't even know what that is, but apparently the way we were typing, people thought we were sim role players. It's a thing. I don't even know what that is. What is a sim role player? I don't know. Oh, (laughs) You said you looked it up. I think it's just people that, this is the way they type, I guess. I don't know. Oh. That's weird. Right? <laughs> it's like so weird, though. I've never heard that before. And then all of a sudden, everyone's bringing it up. <laughs> Somehow it's getting interesting. <laughs> Hello, Patamon. I, to be honest, I wouldn't even want to participate in a blind Digimon challenge because... I, I think those are really difficult. Padamon, I think I could do. Possibly Agumon. But if you gave a Pokemon at me, I definitely think I could do a better job drawing a Pokemon blind than I could draw Digimon. I definitely wasn't either or as a kid. I feel a lot of millennials like to side with one or the other. I was definitely both. I liked both. I, I liked the Digimon games and the Digimon show. But I didn't watch the Pokemon show as much as I watched the Digimon one. Oh, and um, oh, you go. You go. Oh no. You, okay. Celine says I watch. Um, it's Ari, right? Aster, Ari Aster short film, The Strange Things About the Johnsons, and it was disturbing to say the least. Well, it's Ari Aster, so for a reason. Ha ha. Have you seen it? So he did Midsummer and Hereditary. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I have not. I didn't even know if he had a short, short film out. I will have to check into that because I definitely liked Midsummer. <laughs> and I'm recently I just found out of oh I'm blanking on his name the director of uh, Ex Machina and Annihilation. He has a show on Hulu and HBO out right now called Devs, and I've been wanting to watch that. But it's hard because that's a show I probably want to pay attention to. So I have a lot of shows that are background noise, like Tiger King, which was amazing. I think everyone should watch it on Netflix if you have the subscription. It's literally the most interesting character study on Netflix I've ever seen. Uh, but those are good background noises because I can draw while doing it. But like Devs or the short film that you're mentioning, I would probably want to pay attention to. So I'd, I'd have to kind of schedule it. I know that sounds weird, but... Whenever I'm drawing, I'm, I'm on a weird schedule right now with finishing my card deck. And at nights, usually I'm with Josh, and if we're watching something, and if he's just crocheting, uh, not crocheting, crocheting it, yeah. or it is crocheting, yep. uh, then it's probably going to be something that neither of us have to be watching. But then there's other times where we watched uh, Tale of Tales, and that one I wanted to visually engage in. So I you know, put down the pencil. <laughs> When I Google Sim, so Douglas says, someone told me Sim means basic conservative white folk. Don't quote me on that, though. Oh. I don't think that's what they're referring to. I'm pretty sure it's like <laughs> role players. Um, yeah, I don't think that's how we were acting in the chat, because we were being obnoxious. I mean, maybe that is. I guess that's how we are coming across. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> League isn't the most friendly game I wouldn't recommend anyone under the age of 25 to be playing League of Legends. Um, Actually, yeah, scratch that. The... I don't recommend anyone to be playing League of Legends, even though I definitely play it a few times a week. But the community is is honestly one of the worst. Digimon, oh, Lamont says Digimon has such great PlayStation 1 games. I know! Yeah. Digimon World 1, I loved. And then Digimon World 2 I got obsessed with because you have to merge two Digimon into one and then you have to start over with that Digimon at level one and you have to raise it up and then there's a cap. So you keep having to do this over and over and over. So it's one of those games that you really have to grind and just uh, put so many hours into. But Digimon World 1 was so different than 2 and it felt great. I didn't really like Digimon World. Oh. Five minutes, five minutes. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Like, what's going on? <laughs> uh, but Digimon World 3 I didn't like as much. But I liked that each game felt so different, where with Pokemon they kind of just felt like the same game with different Pokemon, which is fine. It works, for sure. But I tried playing the new uh, Let's Go Pikachu, and they it's it was too easy for me. I, I didn't enjoy how much they simplified it. I know for a lot of people, I think it's more enjoyable, because then you don't have to do the grind. Uh, so, I don't know. I think that one's a preference. 
the game, what have we, oh, Animal Crossing. We've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing lately. But I'm all waiting for the new Final Fantasy VII remake, because I'm going to be all on top of that. I might even stream some of that game instead of League, because I don't know if League is the game I want to be known for. <laughs> I'd rather be known for, like, Vital Fantasy of some kind. I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy XII. I, I really like it. I used to dog on it uh, because it came after ten, and ten I thought was perfect. But now that I'm playing it and I'm really investing in the world and the non-playable characters and the side quest, I really like it. I am like retracting everything bad as I used to say about Final Fantasy XII. <laughs> uh, Rachel says there was my life before watching Tiger King, and now there's life after. I can't <laughs> go back. I binged them all in a row. You can't make up that stuff. No. You can't make up the stuff that happened in that show. That is, yeah, been the weirdest thing. I still think I have, what, two more episodes left? Or an yeah. episode? Yeah, that's been so weird. It's just, I don't even think it's real life when I'm watching it. <laughs> like, this isn't real. It's <laughs> These nuts. people are, ev every character, like, they're all characters, too. Like, every person that comes in has their own just quirky, way extreme personality. <laughs> yeah. It's like people I don't think I could ever be around, but they're just so interesting to see. That's why it's so at one point there was a TV show that was being made, and the guy that filmed it, I mean, you, you kind of find out what happens, but I would definitely watch that show. It's so bizarre, and to think that people live these lives on a daily basis is nuts to me. Um. <clears throat> So Trivaldo says, this brings me back to when I was so ins inspired by Tim drawing the collector. Timmy's photo of oh. my hand in his drawing. I bought the print and I was just sitting and staring at this piece for hours. Oh, yeah. well, thank you. Yeah, the collectors, that one's just fun to look at. There's so much going on in it. But that too, and I love um, Vindication too. I mean, to this day, collectors, the longest I've worked on a drawing. Um... Was that longer than Vindication for you? Uh-huh. Vindication was like 50-ish hours. I mean, still a long time, but... No, Collector was 80-ish. The other one that came close was Wooden Youth 3. That one's about 50 as well. But that's why I've been trying to challenge myself. You guys can't see it because I took it upstairs. It used to be in this room, but it's so big. I'm working on an underwater uh, drawing epic, and it's five feet tall. And I want there to be 100 mermaids, 1,000 fish, and be this massive underwater utopia... Kind of like a New York of the underwater world, where there's portals to the other seven seas, and there's uh, sunken treasure, and there's squids, and octopuses, and all that good stuff. But I really wanted there to be a story for like anywhere you look, so anywhere you crop it to like a four by four inch area, and you can see a story being played out. So that's mm -hmm. my goal with that. Um, How are we on time? Because I know that's why. Right. Yeah. You keep talking, Tim. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> We're at a minute, 15 seconds. Ah! <laughs> Fem, can you ring the bell just because we like ringing the bell? <laughs> because, oh my god, I got surprised. Oh yeah, sorry if I made you guys jump. <laughs> Honestly, that would be a really good challenge, though, sometime, is like study hand drawing, where I can just make random, like, out of nowhere sounds, and you have to keep the study hand. I, um, like, hop in behind Tim and just, ah! <laughs> you know what? We're going to put that one in the idea box. <laughs> <laughs> I know what that means. <laughs> um, Zedra Valdo says, day after I drew the hunt around 100 hands, day after I drew around 100 hands and started to say, start anatomy of whole body, so hard, so thank you so much for brutal inspiration and art overall. You fired. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. We are at 30 seconds, everyone. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I'm going to keep mine black and white. I was going to add color, but decided we're gonna keep this a very black and white stream yeah i agree rachel that showed it, it didn't they, none of those she says i thought the same character wise they were so extreme that it didn't feel real even though it was real there was not a single normal person that show nope. yeah i told tim after watching that i was like i am very ordinary <laughs> <laughs> like, compared to these people none of us are that all right time is up though Hang on. okay <laughs> oh good uh so this one was kind of fun i liked adding a little reverse contrast in the background my thumb is still a little weird in this one too now that i'm looking at it 
See, I got to work more on thumbs, apparently. I've, I've fallen in, in the trap of being too comfortable with the subject matter. Why do you feel it looks weird? It's too short. It should be a little longer. Anyways. <laughs> I mean, I could liquefy and move it around, but I don't want to cheat twice on two drawings. Uh, okay, so I'm going to move some things around. I'm going to hopefully uh, grab some of your stuff. If you could post on Discord your hand drawings, and we'll do some live critiquing, and then I'll go into the final pencil drawing. We actually have a lot of hand drawings posted. Oh, do we really? Yeah. Hey, thank you guys. Everyone's been posting. Let's see. I was trying to airdrop to your Mac, but it wasn't showing up in the list. because <laughs> Wi-Fi is turned off. Because I want to be LAN connected. I know, I was oh, like, oh, darn I it. I think if you are LAN connected, though, you can turn Wi-Fi on, and it won't use that primarily. I just don't okay. even want to risk it. All right, then I will not airdrop. OK, let's see here. <laughs> Honestly, Drea, that is the best thing ever. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh, I can't drag and drop anything. Oh, wait. I can probably save. Hold on. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, no. I don't know if I'll be able to do this, Schwa. Do I need to save it? You know what I might have to do then? And I'm totally okay doing this. I might collect a lot of your guys' images that you've been posting, and I'll do kind of a, a drawing uh, critique over it. So I'll make like a layer over it. And I might post it in here because for some reason I can't drag and drop things right now. Oh, oh well, that one worked. Oh my gosh, of course I, I talk about there. it and then it, it does it. Was the file there was not. Oh my gosh. All right, so I'm going to grab a bunch of these. We're going to get a file ready here. Oh, there are a lot of submissions. Wow, you guys are great. Oh my gosh, there's so many. Maybe I'll grab the ones that I think I could critique on the most. Ooh, I really like this one. <laughs> oh, you guys have some good hands here. <laughs> Them says, do we have a Josh Merman in there? <laughs> in where? Um, what were we talking about? Oh, I, I don't know. With my memory, something. are you kidding? I don't know. I totally... I don't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm going to bring in a bunch. But yeah, throw a Josh Merman in there, because that sounds actually really cool. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Oh, hold on. Hold on. So I'll probably give like quick suggestions for each of these. I didn't realize how many there were going to be. <laughs> this was definitely a successful draw along stream. Uh, definitely good for me to know next time. Um, so Anthony, when you're on the Discord server, there's the bars on the left. It's a, there's one that says, um, on our community, welcome and rules, announcements. Keep scrolling down there until you hit the current events one. Um, if it's minimized, make sure you click current events. It might, might be possibly. And then you'll see a channel that's called stream-hand-follow-along. Um, OK, I'm going to have to start talking about these, though, because there's a lot. OK. Uh, ooh, whose is this one? Yeah, we might. I think this is Madame Racine. Nope. Don't want to match here. I'll pull it up in my thing and match it. Well, the tough part is everyone drew the same hand. <laughs> so it's a little hard to 
differentiate. You know what? Uh, I guess, Josh, if you could kind of figure out whose hand is who, I'll talk about the critiques then over each of these. Okay, so for this one, let me pull up my hand reference on the other screen here. This looks like Simon's. The color on your, this screen is different too. I feel like this has like a blue, slightly blue tinge to it. Hang on, let me make sure. That's. Well, while you're figuring that out, let me talk about this one first. So this one has the same um, thing that I, I tend to do, and it's something that my high school teacher was always on top of me for, and it's the chicken scratching technique. And probably me, if you watch me, I'm probably not the best example of not doing this, but uh, if you look at someone like Proko, he has a great YouTube channel about drawing and anatomy proportions. He does very confident fluid lines. He draws primarily with values. It's um, pretty much the academic way of drawing. And I, I kind of have gone off my own path and I do like a scribble shading and uh, I definitely would look at his stuff for a more professional way of doing it. But looking at this, you do the same thing I do where you kind of scribble the edges and eventually you kind of find a form. So my advice to you on this one would be just to clean up some of these edge lines and I mean, where's my ref I'm going to pull my reference on the screen actually. Oh, oh, oh my, my gosh. Oh, that's right. I have to have separate windows <laughs> here. I'm going to make this smaller then. Oh, yeah, so this one is Simon's. Oh my gosh. Even though I have this file open, look, it minimizes the one behind it. What? I'm telling you, technology and me are not friends. Uh, I would say the thumb, kind of like the issue I was having, is a little too small. I would extend it out a bit more, and you can see, oh my gosh, hold on. You know what? I have a better <laughs> way to, oh, oh, now it's making it smaller. See, this is why I work with pencils. You know what? I'm just going gonna, gonna to work with what I got. So on this one, another good example is looking at how things line up. So I, I can kind of see you started doing the wrist, but you erased it. I think it would have been good uh, just to show that. Because the thing that I'm really noticing is the hand should be a bit, a bit more tilted this way, and that way we get some more of the lines here and then pushed out. Because if you look in the reference image, where this dip is, is below the wrist in the reference, if you can kind of see it in the picture. Where on yours, it's above the dip of the wrist. So this is where like visually looking at your reference and then back to yours, where this should have been, I mean, this should have been higher and then this should have been lower. And then that would have pulled the rest of the fingers this way. So yeah, this is another example of just looking at the reference. I'm probably gonna have to quick speed a lot of these. Uh, oh, this one's fun. So this one definitely has more of that style look to it. Uh, so I'm not gonna critique it too much on the realism side, I like the confidence going on here, and a lot of these gestures are great for the outside of the line. I kind of want to see more of this on the interior side of the hand. It almost looks like the outside of the hand was more confident than doing the inside lines. And I would either do a singular line or even like some hatching of some kind uh, rather than um, just a straight kind of squiggle line down. And I think that's where you could even see some really cool, long, elongated, simple, clean lines. And let's see what else looks. Oh, and then for this, I definitely would not have this line go all the way to the edge, make it a little more thicker. Uh, the other thing I, I forgot to mention in the first part of the stream is not to have either triangle fingers or pointy fingers, or as they called it in college, I think it was, what are those things that you put on your fingers and you eat them? Frito, or oh, yeah. You know what those are. So avoid yeah. those type of fingers and avoid uh, bing, bingle, bung. bingles. Get back to me on that. <laughs> Is it bingles? I hit some, yeah. But, well, whatever they're called. Avoid having fingers that are too pointy and fingers that are too square, unless if that's the style you're going for, which I can kind of tell that's kind of the style you're going for. So in this case, uh, it works. 
But then for this hand here, I would honestly get rid of this line and show more of the movement of the hand going this way. And then same with the bottom of the thumb, something like that. Maybe not as down there. Because with a simplified form, you kind of keep it something like that. And I was, honestly, I probably would have made the thumb a little bigger too. So yeah, okay. That was our lovely Drea. Oh, that was Drea. Yeah. Hey. So for this one, is this different than... Oh, these two are very similar. You two are practically the same person. But you know what I'm noticing with this one? The, the wrist is in the better position than the other one. Um, so this one I can just tell is lacking some of the uh, the confidence in doing a darker line or like an outline. And I get that too because I draw really soft. But I think in areas that you want to pronounce like the edges, I can kind of see it here and you're starting to edit. So maybe the thing you're battling more is time. And I, I can tell maybe you're like me where we move a little slower. Uh, but for this bottom one, I would definitely make the thumb a bit thicker and then... Probably bring it down just a hair like that so yeah this one I think just needed more time and uh, just little editing but for the most part good job that one was from Madame Racine oh well, and Femme did you. confirm for us for everyone wondering it's bugles bugles yeah, that's bugles. it <laughs> oh this one's great so immediately there's some shading I am really interested in I think there is some that you got to be a little careful with. Uh, I love shading and I love unrealistic shading, but sometimes if you're going for realism, it can read a bit messy. So even I like the, the darker tones that you're putting in the hand here, but for the ones in the thumb, I think I would keep it more matte because if you really look at the reference image, there isn't that much of a curvature. Now, like I said, if you were going for a stylized look, just ignore everything I'm saying right now, but for the just for a study and even for this hand here I'd have this be more just unvalued so then even on the top of here something like that so you can see before and after how the hand kind of opens up when you take out some of that shading and that would be my my recommendation for that one Ooh, okay, this one, yeah, this one's fun because it's very gestural, but I can also tell, uh, I don't know, this one seems like you were having fun, to be honest. I don't see, I think the proportions are, just need to be added a little bit. You're getting into the triangle finger here, where it's, you know, starting to point out, and then the nails become really, really small, but you want to keep, I mean, not by much, but just a little bit more rounded on the ends. And then same with this one, I would have just bumped out that a bit more to make it look more like a finger. So it's not much. You can see it's just a little bit more of a, a thickness to it. And then this one, I would push the nail down. And then this one, I would focus more on the webbing. It's definitely more webbing included. Because it almost looks like your fingers are really long. Now that I'm really seeing it, the the rectangle or the pentagon part of the hand is too squished. You want to extend it a bit. All right, next one. That one was from Lucas21. The one before that, I actually wasn't able to find the match. I don't know if oh. it might have been one that you rotated, though. I don't know. So for this one, um, I like that you have these lines. That's a, another way of learning how to draw hands with uh, the motioning and having basically everything on a fan. So I can definitely see some guidelines there, which is neat. Uh, same issue as the other artist and myself, where we chicken scratch the edges. And it, obviously with digital, you can just make that your preliminary layer. But with traditional, I would then take an eraser and, or I would fill it in with shading or use a darker pencil on top of it and then maybe start lighter. But uh, honestly, this is pretty good. I think the wrist should be more pushed out same with this bottom one, pushing it more in that direction. And then the 
just maybe not tilting the pinky as much here. Okay, these would be a lot of little edits. And then from here, I would take what base you have, and then I would start adding the bone lines and just simple things like that to express it even further. Okay. Nice. That one was Jim to the hum. Well, thank you, thank you. All right, three more. And then I think I'm going to grab just some of the ones in the second one. <laughs> I should have just done one hand and done like a 40-minute uh, one. See, this is a learning lesson for me for knowing what to do for the next draw with me stream because I, I do like doing these. They're, they're definitely way more involved. Uh, so for this one, this is kind of the same issue the other one had where the dip seems to be kind of at the same plane as a little lower, but I think what's throwing me off is the thumb needs to be bigger and then the, the hand here should be angled down a bit that, oops, drawing on the wrong layer. And I like that you're adding a lot of the curves, but I think it's becoming a little too lumpy in areas. It's just a little bit too lumpy, but I like that you're doing it. It's just a tad too lumpy. And then even with the shading, it feels like there's an extra uh, bone a little too low, which I, I see it in the image, but then I would push it up. So that this is more flat. And I think the whole, I don't want to liquefy because that might ruin my computer right now, but I would push a lot of this area down just a touch. And then I would make the fingers a bit uh, shorter. Somewhere around there would feel better to me. And then the thumb a bit larger as well. This was definitely a harder image to create with the thumb being so much in the foreground. That was lovely box dust. Oh, thank you, box mm -hmm. dust. So for this one, I would keep pushing. Uh, I, actually, there's some good stuff in terms of working with a stop paper because then you can usually align proportions. And this is a good study then where you're not focusing on it looking perfect because it's already being done on um, paper that is kind of meant to be practiced on. I mean, some people use this paper as legit drawings, but for this case, I like that you're doing some of the lumpy. Same thing with the last one, though. In some areas, it's like a mixture of slightly straighter lines and then uh, lumpy areas. So then, same with the thumb. Give it, you gotta separate this one a bit more, so I would even move the thumb down quite a bit. So I think this one is a lot of proportions. I would just stay focused on looking at your reference, seeing where things are lining up. Uh, one of the easiest things you can do is doing spatial awareness. So when you're looking at your drawing, think, OK, when I look at the edge of that hand, it kind of creates this shape like this. I always look at the shapes in the negative space and how I can then push that into my actual drawing. So then even like in here, you see how you kind of came to a point where in the drawing it has more of a, a knife look or it kind of you know drops off and then it creates a flat edge. So that's another way to look at a drawing and uh, create that same spatial awareness. And same with here, you can see how there's a little bit of a plateau in the bottom where yours once again came to a point. And then same with the nails, a little bit, I would just curve them so they're not perfect rectangles. Usually the nail bed they, where the cuticle is is a curved one. And then, yeah, I think proportions would be a big one. And then start to do little hints of the areas inside of the hand. Okay. That was Lamont. Oh, that was Lamont. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. And for this one... Oh, I see you did the warm-up. and Oh, well, that's smart. I like your handwriting, too, whoever this is. It was great. Uh, so for this one, it almost feels like you turn the handle a little bit, and I can see it with the wrist where it was meant to be pushed more off. This one had just a slight perspective, and that's why it's a little deceiving because it almost looks like a flat hand, but it's tilted just enough away from the camera. 
So even with the angle of the hand, you can see how it should be a little more like this. And then everything else gets then shifted this way. And then I would move everything just slightly. And then I can see you starting to hint at things inside the hand. I would just keep focusing on that. And then don't be afraid to draw that thumbnail. I know it's awkward, but got to do it. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. That one was Chris, who I believe is Carrie Sada in the YouTube chat. Oh, well, yeah. thank you. Thank you for submitting. Hmm. Okay. I am definitely learning that I should not do two kind of studies for this type of a, a stream. So I'm going to find just a couple of the third hand and... I'm going to talk about those. Ooh, oh, wow. Well, this one's fun. OK, I'm going to see if I'm able to drag and drop. Oh, it's working again. OK. Phew. <laughs> I can kind of tell you guys had more fun with the second one, or it seems like you were more. Uh... <laughs> I love Drias. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Drias, yours is good. Uh, it's just usually when you warm up doing a lot of hands, you know what, these are the three, I'll, I'll just grab and drop. Uh, you just become so much more fluid in drawing them. That's why I always say, just draw a lot of hands, that's the best way to get better at drawing them. Okay, so for each of these. I can definitely tell a lot of the ones I looked through quickly, they had just better proportions. It seemed like people were enjoying the pose better. And this is what I mean by you can usually tell when a pose is going to be fun to draw and not so fun. So the first one, not so fun. This one, much more fun. And usually if fingers are interlacing, interlapping, it usually just creates a more interesting dynamic shape uh, to draw. Okay, so we're going to start with this one. So on this one, let me move this over, this smaller. So on this one, the proportions are pretty good. I think I would just make, I would extend the wrist out just a touch more here. That, I do have very thin wrists, but I don't know if they're that thin. And then, I would push more of the shading here to emphasize the fat pad on that one. You did a good job on the first shortened finger. I think that was the, like, the tricky one I threw in there to see if it would throw you guys off. I think I get a little lost in here. I would literally take some of that more reddish part of the finger that you can kind of see in the reference image, and I would separate it with a lighter value underneath. And even though I like to do this as an unrealistic way of shading, you can see how even in the reference, this is actually more of a realistic way. Uh, it just so happens that it's a little darker uh, valued near the tip of the finger. And same with the pinky. Uh, the one thing I definitely see is this wrinkle here should be a little higher, it should be more here. But I mean, these are nitpicky things because honestly, I think you would have seen that if you just you know, took a glance back. So really simple edits. And uh, I think if you were given more time, you could have kept working on it. Oh, you know what? I do see having a double wrinkle here and on the thumb. I think the double wrinkle is a little high on the thumb. So I would move that down. Good night, Fem. Good night, Fem. Good night, Celine. Thanks for stopping. I know this one's definitely longer Goodbye, than normal. Goodbye, Anthony. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for participating. OK, so now on this one. So this one, I like how delicate. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, oh okay, am I going to catch it? Oh, no. He beats CM Slim for subscribing. Thank you. Thank you. Ever closer to our League of Legends, Matt. <laughs> so on this one, uh, doo -doo -doo. I do see a little bit of a press on nail here. I would probably uh, make the, the tip of the nail more more straight edged because if you make both sides more rounded, it can just look a bit strange. And then 
usually there's a little less of a gap here. So I would pull that out. You can see how even that little edit can make it look a little, a little more like a nail. And just some subtle shading like that. Uh, this finger, I, I like that you tried to push it down further, but I would bring it up and have that very awkward, almost coming at you position. And I would definitely pronounce that double wrinkle a bit more here. I can tell you definitely have a very delicate way of handling things, but I like it. I would just keep, keep running with that and then darken areas that you know you want to push. So I can see you starting to do that. Looks like the thumb gave you a little bit of a trouble. Oops, grab a darker value. So on this, because usually with softer artists, and I'm one of those, so I get it, uh, everything's a bit more smoothed out. We're a bit afraid to be more angular, but my thumb definitely has a very pronounced bony structure to it. And it almost demands it to uh, be outside of the normal shape. Thanks for stopping, Moontails. Yeah, thank you for coming by. You know what I might do? I might do my pencil hand on a separate thing, because I think that's going to take me a half hour, and I don't want this to run too long. Oh, yeah. So maybe after this, we'll we'll end it off. Got out of Panaman. Oh, that's right. No, you'll still have to do it. Whenever I record mine, Oh, if I can't watch you. Maybe tonight we'll record it. <laughs> Josh is like, gosh, dang it. <laughs> I almost got out of that one. <laughs> so something more like that. See how bringing the thumb. It looks just a bit too skinny. Now, lastly, this one's more of a fun one. Uh, I like what you did here. A lot of fun stylization. So I'm not going to critique it too much on the realism aspect. I would just focus more on... Um, if you were looking at like the curvature of the hand, I think you definitely moved it a bit, which is fine, because obviously this has more of a stylized look to it. Now, I do like that a lot, but I think if you would have pushed it out a little more, then I really like when there's separation of form. So I think maybe showing the edge a bit more of the hand here. Like that, you can kind of see just a little bit of a thicker wrist, I think, would have made it look like a hand. Because this almost feels so thin that the bones don't feel like they're underneath the skin. This might be a little too thick. I can slim it down just a touch. But this one's pretty great. And then same with the fingers. Uh, definitely very uh, pointy. I would just make them a little less... Daggerish. Hmm. All right, so you can see the difference. But with a styled hand, I don't want to critique it too much because this is more fun, and playful, and I, I like that you took it there. Okay, I am almost out of breath. That was a long stream. <laughs> I'm gonna take a sip. Thank you so much, guys, for coming. <laughs> But yes, if you want to submit your drawings or your warm-ups, please do it in the Discord. I'll be taking a look at them. And yeah, I can't believe, I feel like I, I talked for like two and a half hours straight. That was, that was a lot. So thank you, Josh, for helping me with the stream and modding it. And, oh, yeah. Um, our creator even asked, can you look at mine? But I think you said you're going to go through some of them. Yes, yeah. I'll look on uh, the Discord. So thank you guys so much for coming to this. If you want to see more of these type of streams, let me know. Uh, on Discord, and we can make that happen. I like doing these very tutorial-heavy ones. I want them to be... Obviously, I won't do two drawing examples. We'll do one, and then I'll critique more and be more in-depth. But I like doing these type of streams because I feel like I'm actually engaging and teaching in a way that uh, is uh, fun and hopefully useful for you guys to come and watch. So, and thank you guys for those of you who donated to the stream and became a member. Uh, every little bit helps, and especially during these weird times that we live in right now. I think that's all I got. And then just a reminder, tomorrow I'll be streaming the Jack of Hearts, or Jack of Clubs. I started him, so you can see how I got the outlines kind of ready to go. But I'll be working specifically on drawing a person of a darker skin tone and how you uh, layer values to create it. 
And then Friday, I have my interview with Babs Webb. So if any of those interest you, we will see you then. But until next time, take care, everyone. Goodbye, everybody. Take care, take care. <laughs> well, I got to get this to work. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Okay, bye, everyone. Thanks for coming.